Oh, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Planning Board meeting for November 14, 2018. Call the meeting to order. Can I get a roll call? Planning Board. Yes, sorry. Right. Thank you. Mr. Kerr? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Lawrence? Here. Mr. Shu? Here. Mr. Crockett? Here. Everybody drive me to the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Appeal number 2648, Joseph G. and Victor Kunko, uh, 12 Bitford Street. Have I had a chance to review? Any further comments or questions or findings to add? Any motion? I move to approve uh, appeal number 2648's decision as presented. For a second. Is there a second? 
Six five one G and C LLC three three six US Route One. Is there a may have a chance to review? Any questions, comments, or adding findings? Is there a motion? I don't know why. I move to approve findings for appeal two six five one as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? To our meeting. Uh, 
you know, she can always stay outside. That's why we ask to, we can have a, a small deck in front of the house. You know, it's 8 foot by 26. And also to change the appeal of the house because the house was, when we get it, was kind of abandoned. It doesn't look in the neighborhood. We talk to the neighbors to see if anybody is, you know, and everybody is so happy to, we are repairing it, you know. And that's, you know, what we ask. Yeah, please want me to worry about this is the core value of the stretch. Um, <laughs> I'd like to actually see one talk. <laughs> 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 uh,
due to the physical features of the lot and the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct a proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Uh, I don't know exactly what. Uh, it's just asking that you're asking for the appeal because it's not something exactly. that you can physically do for the existing structure. Yes. You need to have the appeal to do it. Yes, we need to have the appeal as well. We, we submit all the information designed by the architect. Okay, but it's not practical to construct the proposed expansion within the guidelines that are there. Yeah, it's not. Okay. The impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion of new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. Yeah, no, I don't think it's going to be make any difference, you know, like I say, even the house and the block behind, they use get approved for one day, and this and all the two houses on the left side, they have a, also a deck and is closer to the street. Okay. I think the one we asking is kind of, is, you know, we submit the paperwork for them, but uh, they say definitely don't want to go for them. Then we readjust everything to be a, by 26. Okay. The applicant has not commenced construction of the enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considered an after-the-fact application. You haven't begun any structure changes or anything? No. Thank you. Questions from the Board? <coughs> well, one question I have, just with the provided materials. I, it's my understanding that there are several iterations of this. Is the top sketch the most recent restricted eight foot projection? He's, he's asking you that question, sir. Uh, uh, actually, this is like a rough plan, you know, and then the other one, did you see the next one? Uh, this is the architect, we give that one to him and because we want to present exactly what it's going to be. We also don't want to do something and, you know, we want to follow what we present. We don't want to have any. Okay. You're not expanding the first floor deck, are you? That's no. it. It's bigger. Excuse me? It's bigger than the second floor is going to be. And the first floor, we yep. have a deck, like this, like 11, and we want to go like 8 in the second floor. And at the same time, we won't have to be able to put in the first floor because it's a lot of our
comes closer than the technique of production to the, to the bottom line. And that's the problem that I see with it, is it, it isn't entirely within the 10 foot limitation of the setback. Which is what I tried to explain in my notes. I don't know if, I didn't get any questions from anybody, so I assume everybody understood it. But yeah, no, it's <coughs>
as opposed to limited reduction, and we can just simply, we can give it the same appeal number and just simply convert this to a practical difficulty application as opposed to the, the limited reduction of yard size. All of the supporting documentation that they provided would still be, theoretically be applicable. You wouldn't waste that, that would still be okay. You just add some information to it that's missing and change the application to a practical difficulty. And, and let me tell you why that, I think that's the way to go. And I think that's what I, I had uh, mentioned to you earlier, um, is that the practical difficulty um, is defined as a case where the strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone and which is which, in, in which it is located and would also result in a significant economic injury to the applicant. And it also has dimensional standards, relief from the dimensional standards, which include lot area, lot coverage, frontage, and setback, including buffer requirements. There's no limitation on the front yard setback of 10 feet. Um, and it, there, you can also ask for, if you do the math, and the lot coverage doesn't come out to 20 percent, you could also build that into your request, relief from the 20 percent maximum lot coverage. That's why I think that would be a better application, and it's what I was trying to mention to you the first time, is that this would probably be the better route based on the first time you had a, a wider addition that you were going to put on. Instead, you came back with the limited reduction and you narrowed the, the addition up but it still doesn't mean it because of the angle of the house. And that's, that's the problem. And that's why I think tabling would be a good idea. It would also save you the, um, the cost of another application fee. So if we table this one for a month, if a month would be enough time to come back with those missing pieces of information, you'd actually have until the 20th. You'd only have the 20th, but you could, you could either come back in December or January. So if you can't get it by the 20th of this much, which would be hard to do, you could get it by the 20th of December and come back for the January meeting and not have to pay an additional fee. And we just convert that appeal to a practical difficulty. Does that mean? Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. There is any list of the rest of the information you need? Or? Yes, I can provide you with a list of the information that we need. We don't have to get it. Because we get the plot amounts, we get the... Yep. For the where it basically you need is the size of what is built, how much percent of the building is built. Right, so your existing house, the footprint of your existing house, including all attached stairs, decks, anything that's attached to your existing house, because it's not in the shoreland zone, and you don't have to do total lot coverage, which would include driveways and patios and things of that nature. We'd just be looking for your buildings. The amount of square footage of that building compared to the square footage of your entire lot. And that percentage can't exceed 20%. If, if your proposed, that includes what you're proposing to add to the structure. So if in adding something to that structure, it exceeds 20%, you'll need to ask for relief from that 20% lot coverage uh, number, as well as the setback, and the amount of setback reduction that that's, and, and then the other hard part, though, is that you have to you have to prove that practical difficulty that there's going to be some kind of economic significant economic injury to you without having the benefit of this appeal experience. So I'll add to that real quick. Um, that would be your best option because right now with the limited um, the, the limited reduction of yard size application. Um, not speaking for the board, but it's highly doubtful that this would be able to pass right now. Uh, and the practical difficulty may be your best route. Two and three can't be met right now. Right. Question. So, yeah. Questions two and three. We don't have enough information. Like the like Brian was saying, the dimensions and so on. So if um, if, if we'll uh, we'll we'll table this. We can we can just go ahead and table this right now with the permission from. Yeah. yeah, it's his choice. Okay, so if if you if you choose to table this until next month or January, 
um, and work with Brian, it'll be a lot, I think, a lot easier for you coming back. Oh, no, that's, thank you for the recommendation. I just to say, you know, right now, you know, to give me the opportunity to try to see if we can work it out. So, you know, I sent all the information to you. So, uh, I guess at this time, would you like to table this application? Well, before yes. we go there. Oh, sorry. I want to That's my fault. No. <laughs> um, Mr. Longstaff, you've kind of <clears throat> alluded to the fact, I would say, that you're picking up number four on practical difficulty with some of your comments here. There's no other feasible, there's no other feasible alternative in the practical difficulty. I'm sorry, you lost me. When we're looking at pra practical difficulty, number four. No other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Mm -hmm. By your comments about them applying for this and things, we're sort of satisfying the fact that there is no other feasible alternative other than the variance that you're suggesting. Uh, uh, I don't know that I would go there just yet. I think well, it's going to be a question. That's the only thing. I don't want to send it down the road or something. Well, I mean, we're not we're not hearing that. Thing. I understand that, but the argument you're going to have to weigh it on the virtue of their response to that question. I don't think you can go there. That's why you can you can think about it, but I don't think that's something that you can decide tonight because they haven't come back with their response to this. No, my question is to with your recommendation that they go this road. Some of your comments kind of alluded to the fact that this is the way to go. I know we're not looking at it yet, but I just want to make sure we kind of address that a little bit well, going in. I mean, let me try to say it this way. It isn't eligible for the limited reduction of the art size. Okay. I don't know what it is eligible. Okay. If they want to stay with the design that they presented, it can't work with the limited reduction. I'm not saying it can work with the practical difficulty, but I can tell you it doesn't work with the limited reduction. So, yeah, maybe the practical difficulty is the only way to go. I just don't know that. Or they could reduce the dimensions on what they want to build, shorten it up to about four feet by four feet, <laughs> and, and that would work. But is that feasible or practical, or is that what, what they want? I don't know. It's, I can't design it for them. All I can do is say it isn't going to work with limited reduction. Therefore, the only other thing that's available is practical difficulty. I don't know if that's going to work either. That's that's up to them to show. But no, I'm not asking yeah. that we're, yeah. we're saying that you get the practical difficulty. I know, but you're, you're asking me to say that that's the only. No, I'm, I'm not asking, sure that's I'm, the only. I'm asking you to just kind of give us, in your opinion, opinion this is the only alternative. It's not going to well, fit this it's one. It's not the only alternative. It's well, another yeah. alternative. Other than them changing That's what I'm saying. Plan. I can't, they can't do the limited reduction. Right. I don't know what else they can do. This is the only other available variance where it doesn't have those limitations. That's all I'm saying. I'm not sure that it's the only thing they can do. Okay. As we've said before, though, they could not do it at all. Right. But is that what they want? That's not what they're asking for. They're asking for an eight foot wide thing. So it, it depends on what they come back with. I really can't. I don't want a record of saying right. that's the only thing, because it isn't. No, I'm not asking you to do that. I was just asking you to well, point out that there's... there's I misunderstood, because it sort of sounded like you were asking me. No, I wasn't asking you. I was just asking you if we could... Okay. It just yeah. the appeal that you thought would be the one that well, they're most likely to get recommendations on. Well, yeah, based on, the, based on what they've question. got into this one, that one, it, it, again, it won't work in this one. Right. So that's the only other one there is. That's all I was asking. Okay. That was the only option. But I'm not going to say that it meets that criteria. I wasn't asking you to do that, but you were just making a recommendation to yeah. this. Yeah. So I was okay. looking at it that way. Okay. So we can table it for you if you want to table it. But yeah. I would strongly suggest just look at number four and have that addressed sufficiently if you can under the practical difficulty when you come back. Okay. Just to make sure that you're presenting information to us that there is no other feasible alternative. That's the hardest one to get by on that appeal. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for reading it. Mr. Chairman, yes. I, I will send you by email all of the, the questions that you need to answer and the application form that you need to complete so that when you, when you come back, you'll see everything that you need to, to provide to, or I think to answer the questions that we're missing. Is that, is that yes, acceptable? Well, that's, thank you very much. And thank you. Just one question, you know, if any suggestions, you know, like you say, if we present 10 in the beginning, then 8, is in the recommendation to you say, look, if we know for 8, maybe not 4 by 4, but yeah. um, um, is any 
Mr. Longstaff works with people pretty well to try to help him as much as he can. So mm -hmm. he's already done some work for you and looking at some things. So I think we might be able to help you out with those. But I would strongly recommend to get it together as to what you completely want. What's your end game? Uh -huh. This is what I want to have, and this is what I could accept. Oh, oh. you go back, Mr. Oh. Chair. And just to clarify, I'm not sure if I maybe I misunderstood what you were saying, but the board won't give you that you know those options. Oh. They're going to look at what you present. Oh, They're right. not going to redesign oh. your project yeah. for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. like if I can't get A, can I get B? Right. They're oh. not able to do that. Oh. Um, so you need to you need to do your best to see if your design and your responses will you know meet the demonstrate that you've met these criteria. I can help you, you know, in understanding and interpreting that criteria to your project. I can certainly help you do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Okay. Yeah, that's that's why I'm saying get get what you really, really want and what you can really be go be okay with. Because that's what you need to bring to us. You need to give us as much information as you can to present that to us, so we know you've looked at any alternatives and everything. And this is the only option you have. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we have a motion to table. I'll move to table application number two six five two. Yep. Two six five two. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Longstaff. We'll just change it. We'll keep the same appeal number and everything. Thank you, Thank you for your time. Thanks. Thanks. Appeal number 2653, <coughs> limited reduction of yard size, residential appeal by William and Linda Thomas, 27 County Road, Assessor's Map R015, Lot 083. And can you please present your name, your address? What can I do? Uh, yes, uh, Bill and Linda Thomas. We applied for a permit to put the addition on on the west side of the building uh, back in and that was uh, three three feet and nine inches over the over the fifty foot setback in the front and they granted us that permit at that time. Um, what are you looking to do now? I'm looking to put a two-car garage. Um, the, all the neighbors in the community have two-car garages. Um, and the garage that we have now is extremely unsafe. It's a one-car garage. Um, it almost collapsed a couple years ago from snow load. Um, and it's, it's, it served its useful purposes in that time. You don't have any pictures or anything? What's that? You don't have any pictures or anything of this? Um, did I like set some pictures into the file? This is like the garage. Here. This is the garage here. Yeah, I think it's, I think you have pictures there. Just trying to figure out what that, <coughs> that picture down here the roof, that's the garage itself? Ah, uh, yes, yes. And you can see that uh, between the snow loads and the, uh, and the age of it, just on a slab. The slab is completely disintegrating underneath it. And, uh, you know, it's just, is that what the top picture is? I'm trying to figure out what the top picture is. Yeah, that's, that's a slab inside the garage. Uh, yes, that's what that broke it away. Yeah. It's just from, uh, it, wasn't pro it wasn't properly done back in 1960. So, yeah, it's not Just one step to me. Um, yeah, um, the appellant uh, has just uh, explained wants to do a 24 by 30 foot garage to replace the existing garage. Um, he provided a partial survey by Steve Ross that demonstrates the proposed side yard setback that he's asking for. What wasn't clear to me, um, based on the, the sketches and the information in the application, was whether or not both the garage and the front entry that he wants to construct both meet the 50 foot setback and that's why I mentioned that there wasn't any mention of a reduction of yard size for the front portions of that 
it's another one of these situations where um, I think because of the angle of the structure versus the angle of the property line, there may be a problem there, and it's just not clearly spelled out on Mr. Ross's survey, which is really the only official survey document in here. I, I wish it just included survey dimensions for all of the additions that um, the applicant wishes to, to make to the structure. And that's why I, I simply mentioned in the staff comments that um, you may want to just condition the approval that, you know, they need to demonstrate that it clearly will meet that before we can issue the permit to build, because I don't have that information here. We have the applicant's testimony that it does, but I don't know that. I have copies of all, of all the previous permits back in, in 93. And it, um, I examined the file and I still did not find proof well, of the I think, I think where the confusion lies, if I can demonstrate on the print. Sure. I just need to speak a little louder. Yes. I, I think the confusion lies, this was back in 91. This was in 93. It could be a little bit. Somewhere along the line, there is this back here. This, this is actually, yeah, well, that's what I found. It, yeah. it, it, it's actually flipped over somehow. Mm -hmm. and, and Steve Ross said that, that where I was setting back an additional two feet offset, it's like a meter coming right there. For the garage. Yes. yes. That, that my house was in compliance. You're an additional two feet. So he said, he measured it out, it was like 58 feet, something like that. He says, there's no sense in me doing any survey and charging you extra money for the survey. So somehow, I think, in the print, back from 91, that's what we used. But what about this front entrance that you want to build on your on your house? Because that's now going this way, mm -hmm. if your front corner is at 50 or 50 and a little change there, you said 50 feet and something to the front corner from the property line? Of the house. Mm -hmm. If that's going in this direction, then how how would this part be 50 feet from the house if it's angling in towards the front? The, front? the addition is out back here, right? And from the far corner to the road is 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 that corner is off the angle. So now you got to look at this being turned the other way, right? And that comes right across there, and that's an existing deck been there since the apple was built. All we're doing is putting a roof over it. We're not enclosing it. We're just, I mean, I, I get medicine once a week, uh -huh. and I need the medicine not to be outside of weather. So that's fine. You know, all I need, all I need to issue the permanent is proof that that's 50 feet from, because you, it's fine if you had a, a grandfather deck on the, on the house. Right. Now when you put a roof over it, that's a new piece of structure attached to the house. That also has to meet set. That's all I'm saying. If you can demonstrate to me that that does meet the well, setback, yeah. it's proof positive, then I'm good. Well, the, the fact that this is 50, 58 feet plus, minus the two feet, is still within the criteria of the Maybe, 50 but feet plus you've plus said plus. yourself, this is turned this way, not this way, right. this way. That's getting closer to the property line. That's what I'm trying so to demonstrate. Well, it's well, it's he is approving this on the contingent of what if he doesn't meet the setback? not do this poor child who approved this with the contingency of I think him meeting the setback. Well, That's very restrictive because then if, he can't if he's, come back. If, he's only, if they're only asking for the side, the relief on the side for the garage, I think you can approve that, no problem. If he's going to meet the, the front setback on the porch, that's not even a zoning board issue. So yeah. you don't even really have to consider it. I just wanted to bring that up because he's exactly right. That's that's what I it's 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 reversed. <laughs> it's turned in the reverse direction. So if he That's doesn't end up meeting the setback, he would like to make a separate application to do the group? Potentially, yeah. Because if, if you want to, but if we... It just seems like we don't have enough information. Yeah, it seems like enough information. Um, but it's, it's unfortunate that you've come this far, I don't, and we still don't have that information, I feel like. Um, I think you need to... I think you need... The board needs to satisfy itself that... The information that's provided on Steve Ross's survey. And, and the 
test we're looking at. And the right. test is we can see down the side. I know. So this is the survey, the one that has a surveyed stamp on it. And it says Steve Rocks. PLS. Yeah, okay. So, so it's showing the side, the, the requested side relief there. He's got a dimension. Okay, yeah. Okay. It's 13.16 feet to the nearest corner of that garage. And so that, that is within the five foot setback reduction that's allowed on this okay. type of appeal. You've heard testimony from uh, the appellant that Mr. Ross did not bother to provide a dimension on the front because it was already more than 50 feet from the road. Is, am I stating that correctly? It was, an ex he said there was, we were going for a variance, and he said, if I, if I put an application in for more, the distance I had to pay more money for this survey in the front, the, all of the existing property is compliance. Okay. And, well, with the Zoning Board of Appeals of the addition in 93, now the whole building is compliance. Now if you draw a line there straight across that, knowing that that was compliance, that puts that porch in compliance as well. But how did we get to the point where someone flipped this? I have no idea. It was a mortgage loan inspection. Oh, it's the same mortgage. Does that, <laughs> does that <laughs> real estate broker? Right? I mean, yeah. who fixes this? I don't yeah. think this is yeah. the average. It's a surveyor, a real surveyor. But, it's, but the addition is 18 feet long, and by the time you angle that across, that, that there's no, you know, the line goes right across it, and it's an existing deck that was there. And, all of them, and I have to have some place to put my medicine that I get once a week. And, I'm, and it's not enclosing it or anything. And it's, and it's the safety reason that, that, the, that the deck gets slippery. And, you know, and it's, you know, I mean, it's, this is 50 feet. You know, we're not talking, you know, like 15 feet. We're talking 50 feet. The cover feet. is totally a reasonable request. Right. I think what's confusing is right now is that part of this application today. Um, because I would also, again, hate for you to have to come back and find out, oh, you know what, the deck doesn't meet the setback, I need to do this whole process again, when you can do it all in one shot. Or you can go and just do the side today and find out maybe it isn't compliant or not. Without those measurements, I think we don't know. So well, one thing we could do is, uh, and as was suggested, is approve it with contingencies. Contingency that assuming that the front porch is within the setbacks, and if that's the case, then it's a done deal, it's okay. If it's not, are they still allowed to build the garage? If you put if you put conditions on your approval and they don't meet those conditions, then the entire thing is the same. Then I can't give them a permit. Right. Gotcha. But if you condition the approval <coughs> tonight and they do meet those conditions, then I would issue approval. Gotcha. What about the cat way before the horse here, people? We haven't even got to the question yet. Well, I don't so know what I mean. We don't know I if we're going to conditionally yep, that's approve true. this. Well, that's um, true. We're still on the staff comments. <coughs>
that's all there is to it. What you said, Steve, come back. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he could, if he could just shoot that one other dimension and show that that house all the way down meets the setback or whatever was approved at the time, if it's, if it's, if you're saying that that porch was part of the approval first for the uh, addition. I'm, I'm assuming you came to the zoning board for the addition. Is that what I'm hearing? That's what we're. The porch was there. Man, we can't. We'll have to have you more. Sorry. Um, I'm just trying to clarify. I'm Bill Smythe, 47 County Road, and I'm ready to move to Fox. <laughs> um, <laughs> the porch was the there. The porch was there. It's always been when the gentleman built the house. It was a wheelchair ramp. I grew up in this town, and I always felt bad for the people that lived in this house. It was the tiniest house in the town of Scarborough with wheelchairs and wheelchairs. This guy came home from work one day and said, guess what I did on my way home? He put a deposit on the house. With two kids we had home. We had one well, child. One income. One child. Years. One child. Well, at that time, yes, yes. So anyway, the porch that is there is the porch that was there when the wheelchair ramp was was yes. there. But when we moved in, the previous owner took the ramp down. Um, so the porch I mean, is there. Why not? But he doesn't want to put. Dimensions. You don't want to put. The roof over the stairs. No. You're just putting it over. And, and now, if I did do over the stairs, then I, would, I definitely would agree with you, Brian, that I would definitely need to demonstrate that. But, but we'll, just, we'll just have Steve come back. But it, it, it's, we're only talking. We're only talking four feet out, an extension out, and the length of the deck, which is about eight feet long, just enough to get my medicine under the cover. I mean, this is you know. Almost five thousand dollar a week medicine that I get, and, and it came today, here. and it comes with three ice packs. Right. And right. by the time I got there so today, I, the ice packs had already, even as cold as it was today, the ice packs had already. Yeah. Been, been I want to apologize. Today. I feel bad. This, this must be frustrating for you guys that you came this far tonight to here today to find. But it's it's it's, it's where the, the where the garage is like fifty eight feet. There's no way possible. That, that can even be close. I mean, yes, the steps, I agree. But we're not putting any roof over the porch. And as you can see, it, it gives that place dimensions. If, you know, with that, with that little, with little canopy, it just you know, gives it a little bit of style. Right now, you can tell it's a 1960 home <laughs> with a one car garage. I think I would hate to approve this with the contingent of it being within the Well, yeah, what would happen, what would happen is we do the same thing we just did. We would basically table it. That's a conundrum because we don't know, we don't have that factual information. Can we just forget about the porch? Just forget about the porch together? Well, no, and I don't want you to come through this procedure to give up something that you clearly need. I really don't want to deserve this. I mean, as a resident, you deserve to deserve that. But I think it just gets me all right. And I, I mean, if we were talking, you know, the 10 foot setback with comments, but it's 50 feet. And I don't know if you know county road at all, but they, they're supposed to go 35 and they go 60. I mean, it's not the best road in the world. Here's, here's a suggestion if I can make one. Sure. Why, what, what harm would it do for you to amend your application right here, right now with the board and say you're requesting a 10 foot reduction of the front yard size, whether or not you need it is immaterial. They can approve uh, we, it. We need numbers. I, I, okay. no, I'm just, uh, <laughs> it's, hey, it's, it's, it's a suggestion. You can, you can uh, throw it out. I just, I'm just suggesting you have appellants here who are Clearly, pretty pretty convinced that they do meet the setback. It's just not demonstrated. That's the 50-foot setback. They're
they allowed California to accept that as part of their limited reduction of the yard size. They may not need that, but you can allow that sort of wiggle well, for the yeah, for, I mean, they're asking to, it doesn't mean they have to build to 40 feet. So right. they're asking for that relief if they decide to change their design or the, the, the porch roof that they want to put over their deck is, is clearly not any closer than 40 feet. Maybe it's only 50 or 49 feet. At least you've given them the approval. I, and I'm making assumptions that you would approve it. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. But I'm just saying that would prevent them from having to come back. And then when they do the building permit application, we can sort all of that out. How are you going to amend this application? You're willing to amend that application? I, I'm, I'm putting it out there to the board. I'm, I'm not willing to do anything. It's, I'm throwing it out there to so something you could do. We can amend their application. We can allow them to amend their application. So would they have No, we are not. We can't. They no, they, 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 could, they could ask you, based on, based on the lack of evidence that, that, based on an alleged lack of evidence, if you're more comfortable saying we need to build something in for that, then they could, in the record, amend their application to include a front yard site. I'm just throwing it out there as a way to resolve this issue. They don't then have to come back to the board. They don't then have to, at this point, hire Steve Ross to come back with another plan. At some point, we'll have to. The biggest issue that I have, and it always had its biggest issue, is I have property markers on the corner of my lots. They're not the 50-foot setback law. The setback law is the right of way that we have to get from the county commission. And that puts it another six feet beyond that, beyond my stakes. So you want the 50 feet from the right away of the property. And the, and the road can go 75 feet anywhere within that 50 foot right away. And it just happened to be at our house, it just sweeps close to the 50 foot setback. And, and you don't take boundary lines, you don't take, the only thing you take is county, the 75 foot right away. And the only way that a common person can find that out is going into the county and surveying what the, how the road is placed within that 75 foot boundary line. And I never, never understood that, is why don't they have a, a center of the road requirement? And then everybody would be, you know, depends on how that road goes through that lot, everybody would be set back similar to the relationship to the road. I mean, I, I, just, I just think that that's unreasonable. Let me ask you the question. Are you willing to amend your application to a, a lot for that other 10 feet? That would make it so that you don't have to have Mr. Ross come back and do another survey. Mr. Longstaff can work with you. We can put conditions in there, whether we, appe whether we approve or deny it. Do you want us to hear it? We'll hear it tonight. That will save me more over all the information. Do you want to do that? I, I have to get the approval for the for the porch. So, how do we need to put this on the record? Well, you need to do, you, you need to have, have a motion. For another fee, though. A motion to, a, to approve an amendment to the application. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve an amendment to the application? I'll make a motion to approve, approve the amendment to the application. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor of improvement to the application? Uh, yeah. Application. Opposed? Support of one. Process. Okay, we'll go over that. You're gonna be able to make note of that. <laughs> so the so the can I get a permit for the, for the addition of the garage to this evening? We're just we're well, just considering everything now. We've added that in. So you've got one of the piece added in that Mr. Longstaff was concerned about. We've now addressed that. So now we can go over the questions and look to see okay. if we're gonna be able to approve your appeal or not. Okay. okay? You can sit back down if you want. You're fine. Yep. Yes. Do we need more on that?
the same page now, so I think we can proceed. Uh, and we've already had a bunch of questions from the board. Um, we haven't really gone off the questions yet, but do you have all of the questions with you now? And just read your responses as you have them written as we go over them. Uh, the existing building or structure on the lot for which the limit reduction of the yard size is requested was not erected by July 3, 1991, while the lot is a vacant, non conforming lot of record. It was constructed in 1960, and it's desperate needs of repair. It's cracked and powdered with the foundation, and it's, with the heavy snow load, has done substantial damage, and it's, it's unsafe. The overhead door is about ready to collapse at any time. And, and all of my neighbors have two car garages, and I have only a single car garage. Okay. Question two. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner of the, or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Uh, the side setbacks are right now 13.1 and I'm moving it over to accommodate the 24 foot garage uh, on the width of the garage and also constructing that I said 9 by 5 but it's more like 8 by 4 actual dimensions. Essentially what we're asking on this one sir is just is it reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant to use your property as people around you are using their properties? Yes. Okay, yes. That's all I need to point from that. I think we were in two different spots on yeah. the application. Question three. <coughs> Due to the physical features of the lot and the location of existing structures on the lot, it would be practical to construct the proposed expansion enlargement or new it would not be practical to construct the proposed enlargement expansion of new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. You've, you've already answered that at length. So mm -hmm. and in case any has, has any other questions about that, I feel he's answered that at length. Uh, the impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion of new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. Again, we're just looking for effects and impacts as yours going to be. It's, it's staying within the community. Yeah. Right. And, you know, back architecturally, uh, you will know, build it very similar to what I have the existing structure. Okay, thank you. You haven't commenced construction and enlargement expansion building or structure for which limited reduction of large size is requested, so the board is not considering an after the fact application. I have nothing to think of. Okay. Just long something I think I asked already. We didn't have any letters on this? No, we didn't. Open up to the public hearing. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll close it to the public hearing. Just to mention that there is some uh, indication that they've got. They've contacted their neighbors and there didn't seem to be any opposition. Yeah, uh, Cleon Nelson, which would be abutting the property, he said, no, okay, you go right on the line. So I'm not actually 10 feet plus away from the front from when I can when I okay. <coughs> Any questions from the board? I think we've asked a ton of questions already, but we'll certainly explore some other questions here at this point. I have no further questions. Well, let's go down through the questions and we'll vote up and down. The existing building or structure on the lot for which the limit reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, where the lot was vacant, non conforming with lot of record. We are going to find some findings of fact here for Mr. Longstaff, so please just not a yes or a no. Please just base it upon findings and information we've got. I won't start down with the new guy again. Stop down with <laughs> The town records will reflect the applicant has shown that the house was built in 1960. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty substantial. You've told us that it was built prior to the town records. Just along with that, established that. So I think we're good on that one. All in favor of one being met? Unanimous. Two, the requested reduction of is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner or other similar properties that are utilized in the zoning district. Back down the center again, please. All right, you guys are going to be connecting your garage to your house now, right? Yes. A lot nicer yes. than before. Yes. And so, I mean, you're going to be have a nice, better use of it. And it's not uncommon for people to have the now the connection there and to also have, I mean, we also need to address to have the roof over their, their entranceway as well. It's going to 
going to be a little complicated to tie the two groups together because of the elevation. But I don't think that's just yeah. We're just going through staff comments now for the board. Okay. We're all set with whatever you've given us. Okay. Yeah, sure. we just need to get ourselves. She, she did. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I just want to let her know we don't we don't really need to hear from you if you want to. You can <laughs> find him, but we're just going through our findings of that at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you're you're modifying the home that's similar to other homes in the area, um, and uh, making it easier as as you know health issues progress through time, it's easier to go into the house through the garage, so don't have to walk outside. For it. I think it's an improvement that is perfectly reasonable and in conformance with the rest of the area. I agree. I believe that the uh, additional protection will be very helpful when receiving the medication. Yeah, like we've already heard from the applicant, I mean, they told us it's one of the smallest houses in the area. Um, it's one of the smallest lots. It's difficult. We've gotten information basically just to, you folks need to have the roof over the porch, I mean over the deck, excuse me, I don't want to call it porch, over the deck for medical reasons and things. So I think you're definitely just using it like anybody else with the neighborhood for a smaller house and just trying to enjoy it in the same manner as others. All in favor of two being met. Unanimous. Um, three, due to the physical features of the lot and the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. We've discussed the physical features of the lot at an expense, and um, we've discussed that we really don't have the option. We're trying to build on the garage that we already need to sit in, replacing it with something better, and there's something putting a roof over entrance when that is already there. They can't put the driveway on the opposite side of the house, or can't put the garage on the opposite side of the house, because that's not where the driveway is. So it's the only logical location for that. I agree. I think this is the most the least impactful as far as changing the property the most reasonable accommodation to make this work for them. I agree. As noted in their comments, would uh, provide drainage issues. And we've addressed the yard size um, at length here. <laughs> uh, I don't know how lock up flip, that doesn't make any sense to me. But we're certainly, this is the only way to do it. This is the only thing folks can do. You're, you're trying to work with us, you're trying to do what you need to do, work within the guidelines you've already established that you're willing to go a little bit further with asking for the amended application to the appeal. So I think three has been met. All those in favor of three being met? Two names. Four. The impact and facts of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Right, I mean, this is a totally normal addition that they want to do, but because of the physical features of their lot, they have to come before us. Constructing this uh, will bring it, I won't say to conformance, because that's not a criteria here, but it'll be very similar to other homes in the area. Yeah, I think this is just going to establish further continuity of, of design style. As the applicant stated, it's going to make the house more visually appealing. Um, the other structures already falling falling down. We've got pictures of those, which we have for the structure as well as the roof and the snow that's going to be on it. So they're bringing this up so it won't basically fall down and be a big distraction in the area. So they're definitely trying to improve the structure a lot. I think that's great. All in favor of four being met? It's unanimous. Five, the applicant has not commenced construction and enlargement, expansion, building, or structure for which the limited reduction in the yard size is requested so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after the fact application. It's pretty self explanatory. It's through the lines. Right, the applicant has specified that he is not going to I agree. concur, they have not. I have no reason to believe that he began construction, so. Same here. Yeah, you've told us you, you haven't started construction. Taking you at your word and knowing that you haven't done that, this is met. All in favor of five being met. Janana. Do I have a motion? 
I'll move to approve appeal number 2653 as amended. I'll second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. All set. You're welcome. <coughs> Thank you for working with us. Thank you. You're welcome. Any zoning board comments? Mr. Longstaff, do you have anything that's coming up? Any trainings or anything like that that's going on? Are we getting a new member? I know the member we had got the planning board. Um, and he resigned from planning board. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we did, we're still looking for, we're still looking for another uh, member. So. And soon to be two, two members. Like to make sure that that's on the agenda. I would certainly say that you put it in writing to, to Dory. 
and say, you, you, as chair, you're requesting that that be an agenda item and go forward. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. I know Ms. Shoup has suggested she wanted to apply for the chair. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. If you want to apply for it as well, I think we should do that. Oh. <laughs> Come wrestle it. <coughs> so should we make a motion to have it on the agenda for next month as to who wants to be the chair and then vote on it? Sure. Yeah, we just do it in December, all okay. at the same time. Right. So let's just add it as an action item. You're not telling me yes or no. I know Ms. Shoup wants to do it. Yes or no? <laughs> I mean, if nominated, if voted, I'll do it. Okay. I think that's the whole key is that the slate needs to be nominated from, okay. from the board. So. Well, there you have it, folks. Whether Ms. Shoup or Mr. Heber wants to do it, if they're not nominated. It's a matter of who thinks you should do it. That's right. One page. Okay, to be fair. I got nominated without asking any, so I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, I know two people want to do it now, so I would put both their names on the agenda for next month. And we can have a vote on it against the rest of the board. And Hopefully, uh, Mr. Blaze can join us as well in December, and it'll give the rest of the board a month to think about it. And then we'll come up with a nomination at the December meeting, and by the end of Dece the, end of the December meeting, I will be walking with the pastor. Oh. <laughs> so, any other questions? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Any second? Who wants to stay? Second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Unanimous. <laughs> nice evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.